Good to see you, Jerry. You too. The last time we had you on the show, you just arrived back in the country and you were in quarantine. That was a year ago, Dickie. Yeah, a year ago, April uh, 19th. And you haven't left? No, I've been, <laughs> I don't think I've been anywhere for a year straight in my you know, last few decades. Because you were in the middle of a tour. I was, yeah. We were in our 50th anniversary tour all over the world, and it was middle of March, and it was really starting to look bad anyway, but we landed, I think it was West Virginia, and I said to my manager, I, I've got a calculator. I, I don't think any of this is going to happen. And the next day, Tom and Rita, you know, as you well know, um, the NBA canceled, and I was on a plane back home, and that was it. It goes like this. When you first started singing together, all those years ago, did you instantly think, gee, we've got something here? When I was in high school and we played in cover bands, we, start, we of course did top 40 things, and that's when I started singing kind of pop stuff. And I, I had a few ballads, and my moments I would sing uh, Nights in White Satin by the movie Blues and stuff. And I noticed that the kids, everybody would stop dancing and they'd get their chairs and they'd come up and sit and listen, and I thought, ooh, this is going well, you know what I'm saying? Writing songs is the lifeblood of any band, isn't it? The well, original it is material. for us, singer-songwriter. It wasn't always the case. You know, the great singers of the earlier generations were interpreters. Frank Sinatra never wrote a song. Elvis never wrote a song. But in my era, you know, from Dylan to the Beatles, Brian Wilson, we were all writing our own material. And it was really kind of a sea change in the business, I think. Of what are you most proud? I remember when some of the music channels were doing these, you know, behind the music, and they always want some of the dirt, you know, you gotta be, tell us. There really wasn't a lot of dirt in our case. We never broke up, we've stayed together. I think you get points for still being in the game, you know, and this is now 51st year of doing this. Unbelievable. You never had to decide to do something else. I've told the story that in the 80s, when things were a little quieter, we came over here and we did a tour of RSLs and leagues, clubs and stuff, and we played all the way up, you know, Coffs Harbor and Twin Towns and stuff. And we'd do Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, and then get in the rental cars, and it was the greatest tour. So even at its kind of quietest time, I was having the greatest time. When you look at new acts starting out, do you think it was harder for you back then, or is it harder for them today? I mean, how do you sort of feel about that? Our personal journey, nothing about it was hard. We, we uh, started playing in the offices of record companies in London in 1970, and we had an offer from almost every label. I mean, it's just unbelievably gifted kind of arc to that. But I do know that that was a ridiculously rare occurrence. Well, I keep on thinking about you, sister in the early days, yeah. I can use that term, in the 70s, acts were signed for a three album deal. Right? Sure, sure. These days, the kids putting out records today, if the song's not a hit, then... You're out. You're done. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that the career concept has just been scrapped. You know, nowadays, you used to have a label that would invest a serious amount of money, and of course it is your money, you're gonna have to pay them back, but they're out, out of pocket. And so they, it behooved them to really spend some time and try and build you into something. What I like to remind people is 1970, as you might remember, a huge record was a gold record. And then we went through this whole uh, thriller and Frampton Comes Alive and Saturday Night Fever and all of a sudden 20, 30 million. And I think the business went, oh, I see, we had it wrong. We thought a million was good. Well, we're now back to that. Some of the great artists of our time, if they sell a million actual copies, that's, that's amazing nowadays. It's kind of come full circle. Of course, in addition to Jerry's work with America, he's recorded nine solo albums over the years. He's a talented boy. And the new album is called Keeping the Light On, the best of Jerry Beckley. It's well worth a look. He's a lovely man. Too. Yeah, sounds good. Good work, Dickie. Thank mm. you.